Um, the McHenry County Public Transit Transportation Advisory Committee meeting is about to come to order. Uh, Tom Riley, the chair, and we're going to introduce ourselves around the table here, and then we're going to ask everyone in the audience to introduce themselves. So, um, Sarah. Oh, I'm Sarah Schrumpf. I'm the executive director at Senior Care Volunteer Network, uh, and we provide a senior transportation program, which is why I am here today. I'm Doug Martin. I'm Director of Economic Development for the City of McHenry. Uh, I'm Virginia Pesci. I'm uh, from representing the Continuum of Care. Uh, I'm Jasmine Vega, Transportation Planner here at the DOT. Uh, Ed Gallagher. I'm the Community Relations Representative with Pace of Urban Bus. Hi, I'm Gary Scott. I'm the Senior Project Manager um, handling the DMC Ride Project for Pace. Um, glad to be here. John McCreel, McKinley Township Trustee. Gary Barlow, McKinley Township Supervisor. Uh, Jim DeNicolo, you sent me an email. <laughs> so that's why I came, and I didn't even realize exactly what this meeting was about. But I'm pretty excited because I got some really good questions. Thank you. Danielle Sandberg of Gunn Township Road District. Carrie Price of Township Road District. Shaylin Nagel, McHenry County Council of Governments. Kelly Shemeca, Director of Specialty Courts. Eric Saitan, McHenry County Community Development. Uh, Josh Lane, the City of Crystal Lake. Sarah Blair, RTA, the Supervisor of Mobility Outreach. Uh, my name is Costa, Original Township Trustee. I'm Kara Lutz, Richmond Township Trustee. Scott Frank, Richmond Township Trustee. And I'm Scott Hennings, I'm the Assistant Director of Transportation here at McHenry County DOT. And I'll just remind everyone before you leave, make sure you sign in so we get everybody's name correctly uh, spelled out. Um, thank you. And the uh, introduction, now we're going to, oops, we do have a quorum, correct? We're going to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Now I'll make a motion to approve them. So moved. Sorry about that. Um, do, we don't need a roll call, do we? I would, uh, yeah, why don't you take a roll? All right. Just to be informed about that. Um, well, I'll All right, I can do it if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, Tom, Tom Riley? Yes, please. Sorry. Sarah Sean? Here. Uh, Doug Martin? Yes. Virginia Bay? Yes. Um, then, do we want to do public comment? Or? We do have some public comments. Okay. Good. Uh, Jim DeNicolo again. Right. Uh, 2310 Greenwood Road, Woodstock, Illinois, better known as Bull Valley, because of the amount of taxes they charge us. So anyhow, I've got some questions. I've worked on this for quite a while, uh, after the 2011 hit, and uh, I was wondering why our transportation system sucked. So I uh, got involved in it, and then I, I threw it down on the floor after about seven years because I didn't see any real progress. Not, not enough. It's 2023 almost. So I have one question with three parts, one question with one part, and one question with three parts. The first one to me is the most important part. The size of the vehicles that you use in relationship to the weight and how many seating capacity they are. You don't use compressed natural gas, but I understand the new vehicles that you have, part of them are gonna be compressed natural gas. As Boone Pickens once said, why don't you use natural gas? on vehicles that have to work on the roads, lessen the pollution, easier on the engines. But yet, right now, the pace buses, uh, right off of Bull Valley, not Bull Valley, yeah, off of Bull Valley Road, behind the hospital, they are all not compressed natural gas. And that really irritates me. Also, it irritates me the size of the vehicles, weight in relationship to transportation, always an important part. How much capacity do you need? How big do the vehicles really have to be? Uh, these are big questions that are a big problems because this is a very difficult thing to solve. You know the road system out here. This is rural. It's very hard to get this to work easily, especially for senior citizens. So that's the first part that really irritates me 
about how we're trying to solve the problem. We all know in a few years, vehicles are going to be a lot different 10 years from now than what they are now. But it seems as though we're just kind of fudging the edges and we're not really solving the problem. Some service, very good service, I've used it, but I, I just, it just baffles me. Uh, okay, and then the last part of that one is, how do you make your routes? Because from what I can see in my area at uh, Greenwood Road and 120, uh, <laughs> they laughingly have a stop area at, at 120 in Greenwood. Yeah, you're going to catch a bus there? I don't think so. But basically, it's just going from one train station to another train station. That's the setup they got now. Now, Greenwood Road, you need a turnabout. I know it's four or five million dollars, but that is one of the most dangerous intersections I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, when it says 55 miles an hour, that's only a kickoff point, because most people go over 60 miles an hour on that road. Very, very dangerous intersection, and I hear that you are in the process of figuring out where to put more turnabouts, and this is one of them, which is a very good thing. Uh, the last part is the bike routes. How are you gonna make bike routes? It's, it's almost impossible in this rural area to do a, a decent job. You're gonna have to use, uh, uh, you're gonna have to incorporate land from farms and stuff, and you know, you got the right of way. Uh, are you gonna make, a 10 foot wide multi-purpose with asphalt or are you going to go with concrete? And that is a large process. No wonder you say 2050. I mean, it, even in 10 years, you're not going to be able to accomplish much. So that's where I'm at there. And then the last part of it is, um, yeah, never mind about the last part. The sidewalk, yeah, I said the sidewalk. The sidewalk should be multi-purpose. You want to see somebody that did it right? Do Google Earth, do Marco Island, and see how they incorporated their vice packs in relationship to the town. And the town's speed limit in the whole, on the whole island is like 30 miles an hour. And now they're even putting golf carts on the road. So that's really dangerous. So basically, they solved the problem with the way their system was set up. So I would like to see more progress in relationship to the transportation vehicles, for one thing, is the most important part for me. Because compressed natural gas, it ain't going nowhere. And it's easier on the engines. And I think that would be a very, very big consideration. Well, Jim, that's that, yeah, that's that, about it. Thank you for your comments. I, I do appreciate that. Usually we don't answer public comments, but I will say that I know PACE staff would have to be happy to talk with you maybe offline after the meeting. Answer any questions you have about CNG, about the routing of their bus routes. Um, just make sure Ed or Gary have your contact information and they can definitely okay. get in touch with you afterwards. Right. And, and you and I can touch base on the roundabout issue as well as the bike, the bike route issue, and I'd be happy to have a further conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there other public comments? Okay. And moving on, we're going to old business. Um, first is the McRide program update. And that's going to that's be. That's going to be me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've included in your packet ridership data for the months of August and September. Um, those are on page five and six. And you will see that we um, had a total of 7,911 rides in August and 6,676 rides in September, totaling 14,587 rides in total for those two months. Um, MCC and 5310 eligible rides have also been included on page seven, I believe. And um, one thing I wanted to make note of is September had the highest amount of riders um, since our partnership began with MCC last October. Um, so you'll see that that had a total of 402 rides for the month of September. And MCC um, monthly average is around 175 rides. So um, just wanted to make note of that. And uh, nothing further on uh, MC ride. 
But the uh, next item is the uh, MCDOT and PACE fiscal year 2023 IGA. Um, so that was a separate document, and you'll see that first page being the resolution. Um, this is the draft PACE MCRI IGA. Um, this is a draft that outlines our agreement with PACE, and uh, this version updates the MC Ride service hours from the current 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. to a proposed 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, it also outlines PACE's draft um, budgeted subsidy amount of uh, $1,514,215. Uh, I don't believe that number is included in this packet, but that was something that was shared with us as a, a draft estimate last week. Um, and if there's any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to, to answer. Maybe for the benefit of the audience, for those that aren't as familiar with the financial structure of our MC RAD program, uh, how it has worked over the last five to seven years is that uh, PACE, our transit agency, and the county, we split the operating deficit. And the operating deficit is, is the cost of operating the service less fares. So um, any given year, our operating deficit is somewhere in the two and a half million dollar range, uh, which means that PACE funds 50% of that, the county funds the other 50% of that. Um, what's shown that Jasmine just went over in our, our draft IGA for next year, 2023, is that the county's committing to a, uh, a maximum subsidy of the program of $1.8 million. Um, and, and that's going to fund 50% of the operating deficit. And PACE is committed to a $1.5 million uh, subsidy of the program, again, 50% of the operating deficit. So um, what that means in reality is that our program can be roughly in the $3.3 million range, and we still have enough funding to, do, to provide trips that we need to provide. Um, but as soon as we exceed that $3.3 million, then that's when the money starts running out. So we, we hope that that's not going to happen, uh, especially with all the, the issues around the driver shortage. Uh, that's kind of artificially capped the amount of service we can provide. Um, but you know, again, the, the, finan the overall financial structure is going to remain roughly the same as it's been over the last few years, uh, with the exception of, that, of the, the hours of operation being extended, uh, like Jasmine just mentioned. So uh, the hours are really the, the only big change from last year. And I wanted to provide that for the benefit of our township partners who are here today who may not have a good understanding of how the county kind of operates our service. So um, looking forward to hearing how you operate yours in a little, in a little bit here. Okay, um, then we have the service partner updates, um, RTA. Uh, Anthony Safali uh, is unable to be here today, but he did want me to make a note for the group that RTA will be presenting to the county board next Thursday, November 10th, for both the fiscal year 23 regional transit budget and their strategic plan draft. Um, after the presentation, staff will be available to answer questions and receive public comments regarding the budget from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. PM in the uh, Calkins Room B at the McHenry County Admin Building. Thank you. Uh, Pace? Uh, sure. I will start. Um, again, my name is Gary Scott. I'm the Senior Project Manager of um, McHenry County's Paratransit Services, um, the ADA, and the, and the MC Ride Program. Um, just as some uh, as Scott references earlier, but we are actively recruiting drivers. So if you know people that would love to drive um, a paratransit vehicle or a big bus, uh, please send them our way. Uh, we're working at PACE to do that. <coughs> we're working with our contracted services, um, our bus contractor, First Transit, with our taxi providers, and with um, our new rideshare uh, partner, user. Um, we are uh, trying to meet the demand by um, increasing the um, driver wages um, in looking at and reviewing um, a minimum wage analysis for, for uh, the state of Illinois, Cook County, and the city of Chicago. So um, we're hoping 
that's enticing and people will um, want to drive for our service and help with um, some of the capacity needs for the MC Ride program throughout the region. Um, our on-time percentage and um, on-time percentage to appointment times has been um, meeting and above pay standards uh, recently. Um, just some other things um, regarding complaints. Uh, they've been at a minimum lately for the MC Ride program. Um, the best phone number to call, um, and if you just want to jot this down, it's 800-606-1282. Um, option two. You can also email uh, passenger services, uh, passenger.services at pacebus.com. Um, and you can also get me a call if you want. And um, my direct line is 312-341-1000. Uh, um, and my name is Gary Scott, and um, it's gary.scott at facebook.com. So and I try to get back to people as soon as I can uh, with any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, we are still uh, sanitizing our vehicles on a daily basis in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Masks are welcome, but not required on these buses. Um, I also wanted to bring to attention um, our new launching of a mobility as a service pilot. Um, just, I think yesterday, uh, we launched an official partnership with Transit App and um, it's on the PACE website, but one of the really unique features of this uh, new application is that um, riders will be able to use the application for trip planning uh, using all of the PACE services. And there are other services interlaced as well with, um, like, I believe Uber and Lyft, um, the Chicago Transit Authority, Metro, and um, additional um, uh, partnerships are in the work as well. But one of the cool things about this is that um, through our partnership with, with Transit, uh, they're now using our Royale feature. It's um, basically showing uh, extended bus routes, showing more uh, departure times, tracking vehicles um, for all of the transit uh, that's available in the application. Uh, there will be push uh, notifications uh, as well as uh, crowdsourcing information. So you'll be able to find out um, how crowded um, the bus might be and um, help with the accuracy of uh, real-time uh, trip information. Uh, you can also have like a little celebrity status. You can have uh, like an avatar that you use and you can see if you're getting, getting like kind of artificial points by riding trips, and kind of fun. But, um, it's provided uh, through our partnership with Transit, and it's uh, mainly open to existing um, pace riders. So um, I highly encourage everyone to download the Transit app, it's free, and it's uh, kind of fun to, to use. So um, I'll uh, be around afterwards and uh, pass the baton to Ed. Thanks, Gary. Uh, and everyone, you should have on your dais uh, the information regarding the Transit app. Uh, as well as some of the tricks and trades. Uh, I will say that app is really nice. Uh, it does also link up with some other opportunities such as bike paths and walking paths that are you know, in the county. I was just looking while I was sitting here and there are a couple different options to get to the closest bus stop, including a bike path. So that was nice to see on the app. So uh, it offers turn-by-turn uh, -turn and step-by-step -step directions to walk you from where you're located to the lowest, uh, local station. And next is my written report that's in your packets. Uh, Pace's fixed route service on our routes operating in Kenner County is at 51% pre-pandemic levels. Uh, I provided a, um, a graphic of uh, our routes and the ridership as of the end of the third quarter. So that's as of the end of September uh, for the first three quarters of the year. Uh, there is the list of the total ridership as well as the percentage of 2019 uh, ridership, and as well as the ground total information. And then below that is our budget overview. Um, I don't feel like I need to read everything that's listed, but feel free to take a closer look at the budget information. One thing I will note 
Uh, part of our capital investment next year, uh, we're proposing $60 million towards the electrification of our first uh, bus garage in Waukegan. It will be our foundational um, garage and electrification process for our entire system. We ordered, we ordered 20 electric buses last year. The bulk of those will be going to Waukegan, but some of them could be utilized in other locations. Um, and uh, PACE is also looking to reduce our, our, you know, as we start to come back from the pandemic, we're continuing to work with our uh, service boards to you know, create more fair parity and connections to other services. So we're, we're looking at, we have proposed reducing transfer fees uh, and transfer costs, as well as uh, linking up with PACE and CTA to create some new passes when it comes to uh, you know, options for individuals utilizing our service. Uh, so the full details are in the packet. I also provided you with a little uh, brochure from all of our uh, budgeted presentations that we've given throughout the, the six county region. And uh, PACE's director, uh, board, or our board director, uh, Director Smith, as well as our executive director, will be at the next county uh, committee of the whole to present the budget in full. Open any questions? Thank you. Um, I don't see Rick or Jasmine. Do you have a? Um, I don't metro? have an update. Um, yeah, with Rick. Okay. Um, that's the. All the old business, so new business. Uh, the first one is the township transit coordination. And Jason, do you want to give sort of an update or an overview of sort of what we're looking for today, or do you want to be any for this? Okay, well, uh, I, I really, so at, at the request of a, a couple of county board members, um, we wanted to invite the, tr the, township, the township bus programs here to this meeting today to sort of learn a little bit about your services, um, how they operate. I, we would love some data, if you can share data with us on your number of trips provided, uh, you know, the locations that you're giving trips to. Um, you know, we here at the, at the county, we receive a lot of data on our program, our MC Ride program, but we don't know very much about your individual programs at your township level. Um, so we thought this might be a good start here at the last meeting of the year to invite you to this meeting, kind of give an overview, um, share with us anything you're willing to share about how your program and maybe the county can work more collaboratively to provide more service at a lower cost in the new year. Um, and I would expect that this is gonna be the first of many conversations over the, the next couple of years. Um, we're not gonna solve any problems today, but I think before we can run any of the walk, we need to first learn about your services uh, before we can do anything. So. Um, I know we've invited the uh, Algonquin Township Road District here, we've invited McHenry Township, uh, Richmond Burton Township, as well as the Village of Hebron. Those are the four uh, <coughs> municipal slash township bus programs that operate here in McHenry County, beyond our county program. Um, so I think, uh, starting in alphabetical order, why don't we have Algonquin Township give maybe a brief overview, Danielle, if you're willing to do that. Um, and feel free to come up maybe to the podium if you'd like, just to kind of be more uh, this is very informal, um, so feel free to talk as, as little or as much as you'd like about your, your bus program. Okay. So um, we operate within Algonquin Township boundaries. Um, our ridership has increased post-pandemic. Um, we have our services open to seniors and individuals with special needs. Um, our bus runs from approximately seven in the morning to about three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so our ridership is literally 50-50. We have individuals who can no longer drive or due to their disability, they're unable to drive, but we give them the ability to get to work and be productive. Um, we just purchased a brand new bus. We had two very old buses, um, which we subsequently sold to Nanda Township and we auctioned the oh, yes. yes. So we have two old buses, so we have one that we've replaced and we will be, uh, we have a connect um, vehicle that's coming to be a set, like a supplement for a bus. Um, our cost is $3 round trip, so you can 
We have one side of the township in Fort Barrington and need to get to um, Algonquin, and it's still $3 each way. Are you curb to curb or yes. door to door? You're curb to curb. Three dollars each way, so six dollars round trip. Um, I say we average anywhere. When they call, they call, and leave a message. I'm there eight to three, do a majority of the bus scheduling. So I call them first thing in the morning. We ask them to schedule ahead. We do also work with our supervisor's office for those that are getting assistance, and we do transport them no charge to the ones that are getting assistance from the supervisor's office. Uh, we do a lot of doctor's appointments, a lot of getting people to work. Um, when they call to schedule a pickup, we do schedule their ride home as well. Um, pretty good unless there's something that comes up with getting them within about five, max, ten minutes of the time that they're scheduled, which they seem to really like. Our bus does have 12 seats, uh, space for two wheelchairs. I want to say we average anywhere from, I mean, we have some slow days and some very busy days. Usually it's about six to nine passengers a day because uh, we only do have the one bus and it's the pickup and the bring home as well. Uh, we go out to Good Shepherd in Northwestern and Huntley. Those are two that we go outside of the township to due to the medical office buildings over there and the senior residences that are right on the border of the township. Um, we have four bus drivers. Some are just wanting to work one day a month. We have a couple of guys that like to work two days a week. Um, they all really seem to work. It. It's a nice retirement job for them. Nice guys. Uh, what else? Yeah, I'd say we average probably anywhere between 450 to 600 miles a month on our bus. Um, just keeping it within the township helps to keep the mileage down. And yeah, we try to accommodate same day rides as best as we can. Unfortunately, it's not always working out that way. And our bus also does do the local food, food pantry. Um, the last or third Tuesday of the month, they pick them up from the senior living complex in Cary, bring them over to the Cary Grove Food Pantry, and then we bring them back with all of their groceries, free of charge. So that's how our bus works. Are you, are you Monday through Friday or all Monday through Friday, no holidays, no weekends. Our bus is also utilized um, for special events. We have helped the veterans um, in the parades, like Founders Day. So free of charge, we will help out with parades in the area and all that fun stuff. Can you tell us about your budget? I mean, really all we pay for with the bus is the normal upkeep, the salaries for the bus drivers, and they usually average about 20 to 20. The two guys that work two days a week are 20 to 25 hours usually every two weeks, and then fuel. So plus we have the money back into the bus and it's 100% the road district. How many, how many trips a month do you average? We do six passengers a day. Majority of them are round trips. So that's eight. Mm -hmm. Probably about 250. Okay, thank you. What's the capacity of the buses? 12 um, seats and spots for two wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I know some of our other townships that are here, they apply for uh, senior services grant funding for their bus programs. Has that, some, has that been something the township, Algonquin Township has considered applying for? I know you haven't been awarded that funding as um, of We are considering it. Are there things that um, that you're hearing from your riders about why they choose to use your service instead of the county's bus program? Or we have a lot of people that have been riding the bus for a very long time. Um, the new ones that are coming in, I just actually had someone the other day that said he goes through the senior volunteer volunteer network. Um, they didn't like where they would and would not drive him because he was looking for a gym to go to. And then I've gotten a couple of complaints about the waiting time on pace. Other than that, I don't have anything like this. Yeah, and the locations. What was the, the locations? The locations where they're drop off. Thank you. 
for example, we have a woman who works at Meyer, and so she'll call, she, we let her schedule for three days a week that she works, so she knows that she's set to get to and from work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, pretty much every week, unless we're closed. So that convenience is kind of nice. Do you know how many unique riders you have? Very little. We are, these are our repeat riders. There are regulars we have, and they're all, a lot, of, a lot of repeat. We have some that occasionally, every month or two, pop in and need a ride. But yeah, we have so many new ones coming, though. That's the thing. The new ones become the repeat riders. So, okay. and it's a first come, first serve basis. We try our best to get everyone in and out when they need to be. And we have, I believe, probably 850 people signed up for the bus. So, so, okay, so you have a Gunquin Township residence then? So the yes. people that live in the township, you drive, you drive, then you drive to some out of, out of township area places? Just Northwestern Hospital in Huntley because of the medical office building. I don't know if you're familiar with that area over there. There's all that senior living right there in Layton Hills. Um, and then Good Shepherd also because of their medical office buildings over there. Okay, so you, that's the only, only place. So you don't go other places in the county. Okay. Okay. Uh, person has a wheelchair, can, do they come with another person that assists them? The bus drivers assist them on and off the bus with the wheelchair lift. What's that? The bus drivers assist them on and off the bus with the wheelchair lift. Other than the other one that I'm with, they have to have an assistant with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the last question I have. Uh, and I'll ask this of all of our partners that are here today. Are you willing to share data of, that, of your riders and your ridership? Um, and it, it's, it's a two-way street, too. If you'd like to see some of our data with your, your residents, um, we'd be happy to set something up so that you have a better understanding of what we provide to your residents and we have a better understanding of what you're providing to our residents. So, good to hear. Thank you. All right, so we'll, we'll head north. Uh, McHenry Township, are you okay doing a brief overview of your program? Sure, I'll start with a, a brief history lesson. Um, it goes back to uh, 20, the, the uh, 2020 primary election where there was a, uh, a question put on the ballot regarding whether or not the people within the township were willing to support the bus program. Uh, we had over 7,900 people vote yes, uh, and we had 1,393 people vote no. It was an 85 to 14 or 15 percent uh, swing. So the bus program is very important to the Kendrick Township. Um, for instance, year to day, well, let me back up. So our bus, give a quick description of it. Our bus program is a door-to-door program uh, for anybody 50 years older including disabled if needed. We do have a large um, rider group from uh, the disa disabled. Um, some of the things I was looking at last October's numbers that they provided, I got from my staff last night, is that we had over 191 ramp trips last month and also out of 620. Uh, so that's quite a significant number of folks that are utilizing our buses um, that are in wheelchairs uh, or need uh, additional assistance. So again, we're a door-to-door -door service. We'll help them on and off the bus. We will take their bags up to the door. We will not go in, but we will help them as far as we can get them. Um, we're also working with uh, some of the senior homes uh, to help uh, coordinate rides better uh, when it comes to scheduling, that was a question. Um, we have, as Post-pandemic, we were getting a lot of individual rides to stores and things of that nature. We service anything. We go to the hospitals within the county township, and we go to the stores, wherever they would like to go. So we had a lot of riders that were riding the same day, going to the same location. So we're working with the senior homes to coordinate rides on specific days of week so that um, we can get them all there and back. Uh, we typically, um, was about hour increments or so. So if one bus drops off and it's gonna be longer than an hour, depending on our routing, we may pick up with the second bus also. So there's all sorts of things, dynamics going on 
um, with our program as I learned it uh, here. But mainly, I just wanted to point out is that you can ask me any question you want, I'll try to answer the best I can. It's, that it's, it's uh, the town, the, the people in the township want our bus service. It's a unique bus service. Um, and uh, my board that supports me um, is willing to do uh, what it takes to give them that service. So uh, we're very fortunate and we were granted um, some funds from senior services, which I appreciate. And we're also looking at additional grants in other areas so we can find some funding. But it really starts, it starts um, from knowing your ridership within the township and you need to reach out to them. And I think you'll find that in our case, our folks really want it and uh, will help, obviously the taxpayer will help fund it. Um, we have kind of another unique situation uh, where our funding was dramatically cut uh, a couple years ago with our previous board. So we're fighting that. But one of the things that we're doing is we're fully funding from the standpoint of minus the grants, we fund everything else on percent uh, we're lucky to have an intergovernmental agreement with our road district on fuel. That saves us a little bit of money with fuel. Um, and we're looking at other places to try to try to save some money while uh, providing better service. A couple of the ideas that I have is um, servicing outside of our township um, that I'd like to try to figure out how to do and also extending our hours. We're currently 8 to about 2.30. Uh, we, we need the longer hours uh, for those folks that that are at the doctor or wherever they may be. So we're fighting with bus driver shortage also. So uh, we continue and I'm really interested in uh, the wage survey and what what wages are being paid. Because um, that's obviously going to be key to getting more bus drivers uh, and what we're able to offer. Um, John Petrito is uh, one of my trustees who's been uh, very active in the bus service prior to me even getting here. And uh, I, I have to thank him quite a bit. He's activated our senior group, uh, which stays very involved. They're aware of everything that's going on. Um, and we'll report out to our senior group um, that he has uh, regarding transportation in the club. So I don't know if I missed anything. But we charge. We charge, we, it's actually, we charge a dollar, but it's a donation. It's, they don't have to, it's free. If you want to ride for free or need to ride for free, you can ride for free. But we, I don't, I'd have to go back. I didn't have revenue numbers because that, yeah. it's a donation. It's, it's not uh, significant when it comes to the budget. Our well, elections are definitely behind the bus program. Well, you've yeah. shown that. And, and I want to be careful there about free. It's, that's another thing that our ridership has said is that um, when the budget got cut and the previous board raised the price of the buses, um, some of the riders uh, were unable to pay the fee. So John and his group went out and raised funds for uh, coupons for those riders that needed it. You also run into a pride situation where those folks don't want to take that. So there's a lot of dynamics going on that we're trying to manage uh, to keep our ridership up. But our, our uh, ridership month over month, uh, I apologize, John, if you have the October number, but as I mentioned before, you know, I'll just go back to April, 442, 383, 388, 428, 587, 559 for September, and where are we now? 619 for October. So we're growing, and I think I mentioned the other day too that Northwestern has canceled their uh, band program, so we're picking up rides there, and also picking up new people along the way. Good question. Sure. Um, when you work with the, the senior facilities, um, do they contribute at all to group rides? If you're so, like for their residents, I'm just curious. If we have know. a few riders that um, go to the senior center. No, like if you if you're picking someone up, say from a nurse or uh, independent living, yep. assisted living, in um, like groups. Has, has anything ever been I, I haven't drilled down into the data to see, and that's I'm trying to work with our dispatchers. Uh, we, we have a transition in dispatching and also getting new bus drivers. So we're collecting more data than we have in the past, and that is one of them, trying to understand if we can 
group people together from independent living if they're all going to, let's say, senior services at our location. Okay. But to answer the question, we're not collecting anything from the nursing home. That's what, that's what my question was, is that the nursing home itself or the facility itself was um, contributing to the cost? No. Okay. How many questions do you have? Three. Three. Yes. We at the county used to receive data from the town, from the Henry Township on ridership and who your residents that would take the service are, even your financial information about how much the service is costing. Sure. Um, is that something you guys would be willing to share with us again moving forward in 2023? I don't see why not. Our uh, bus service runs about $130,000 a year with uh, $20,000 in grants, and the rest comes out of our budget. And hopefully, uh, we'll be able to get another grant this year for an equal amount, a total of $40,000. So, we're funding about $100,000, $110,000 a year uh, going forward at this point. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Did you say your biggest wish is extended hours, more hours? That's my biggest wish. That's what I feel. Um, but again, it's hampered by drivers. Um, the riders are there. We just need to figure out a way to extend the hours. And drivers have been difficult, very, very difficult to come up with. Okay. Thank you. So I'm not afraid of self-criticism. You, you must hear from your riders about why they choose to ride your program instead of the county's program. Uh, what have you heard? Why, why are people choosing to ride your service over the county's bus program? Um, again, we're a door-to-door service. Well, I'll use the term express bus service. So we're there when they're ready to get picked up. They don't have to wait for somebody um, to pick up, or that's the big thing at either end. Um, those are the main things that I've heard so far. Do you do the same day? So if they call you in the morning, you take them. If there's a spot, they'll squeeze them in. Yes. Okay. We we want advanced. Um, we try to fill up, you know, a couple days beforehand. Again, regular riders, mm -hmm. they make a large part of our schedule up. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we'll, if there's an opening and it fits, we'll definitely service them. How far in advance will you take a ride? Um, I, don't, I don't know, I'd have to ask my dispatcher, but if somebody is a regular, they know who they are, so they pretty much have the schedule filled in each week. Um, but that person has to make the phone call, we're just not gonna block the schedule right. off. Um, is the dispatcher part of your the township staff? Or our, yeah, our dispatcher is also working the front desk for us. Okay. <laughs> Change the stats. Yeah, well, we have multiple people. Yeah. The other thing I left out too is that um, our parks department, the folks that work out there, our, uh, our operations manager, and also a couple of the leads out there, um, they are drivers also when need be. So, Let's say we have two bus drivers on and we need to fire the third bus. One of them will grab grab the bus, go pick somebody up and take them. Out. So um, we're they're wearing many hats. Yeah. One more thing I thought of, Gary. This is a question for you. We used to coordinate all the calls through the Pace Call Center for the township. Is that still happening? It is not happening. No. No. And when did that transition? Was that um, the beginning of 2019 or 2020? I don't know, but I know. Um, I could look too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't it was sometime in the me. It, it was at least uh, two years ago. Um, and I believe you still use Trapeze, our software. Um, no, to, we're not using. You're not using. We're not using your software. software. Okay. We're. That's another thing is that I'd like to go out and find a a user friendly software that that's out there that I need to take a look at trapeze, that's one thing, is uh, if I get somebody from your organization to come in and show me trapeze, I'd love it. Because that's been one of my questions over the last couple of weeks when all of this come up, uh, came up, uh, is that what happened to our relationship with dispatching, you know, how do we get to where we are today with doing this dispatching from essentially a manual standpoint? 
Let's do the fire back up. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay. It predates me. I've been in pace only about six and a half months. Sure. So, but we'll find out. Absolutely. Yeah. And just to provide a little bit more info, so back in the day, uh, the county, we, we get monthly bill, bills from PACE. PACE sends us an invoice once a month for our MC ride service. There was a, a line item on that invoice that was a $300 fee for the McHenry Township uh, call center costs. And we would pay that on behalf of the township when the calls were going through the, the, the PACE call center. Um, and that's why I asked when that stopped, because I, I couldn't even remember how long ago that was. But um, we used to be, uh, I guess, we used to coordinate closely with McHenry Township on our two services and run everything through the same call center. Um, and who knows, maybe that's something we need to get back to, or maybe there's some kind of a, another type of partnership we could, we could come up with on you know, two and two agencies. Just um, a question that I don't know why it's in my head. Do all of the townships, um, that support McBride, do they pay a fee to McBride? So uh, the, the way the program works is up until 2021, uh, from 2012 through, through 2020, if, if a township wanted to be part of the McBride program, they would pay a fee. And it, it varied from, I think, like $1,200 up to $12,000 a year. In 2021, we stopped that. Now there's the townships don't pay anything, and everybody is part of MC Ride. So your residents have access to our program just like they have access to your program. And you're not paying anything for that. Okay, so um, that was historical information I ran across. That. Correct. So yeah. it's no longer that way. It's okay. no longer that way. So now we cover every single resident in McHenry County has access to the county's program. Uh, and that was a relatively new thing. Like I said, 2021 was the first year we went countywide. And we got rid of the local contribution aspect of the program. Good, good question. Anything else? I want to keep this moving. Should we go to Richmond? That's it. So Paul, Paul walked in a little, a little after the meeting started, so Paul is the supervisor of the Richmond Township. Yeah, my name's Paul. Last name's Hayes. Easy to forget. Uh, what I'd like to tell you about before we get going here is that we have uh, three of my township super uh, tr uh, trustees. I'd like to introduce the uh, gentleman with the distinguished beard back there is Scott Friend. In between him and Costa is Kara Lotz and Iftika, uh, Costa Iftika. So they are actively involved in what we do. Yeah. I'm fumble fingers when it comes to passing out paper. I've got some for the audience too. Just uh, give me a moment. Uh, those that are sitting right here are okay. there's some there should be enough to go around. Okay. Richmond Township, uh, much of what I, I heard Gary Bar uh, Barla saying is uh, what we do too. Uh, our riders are 50 and older. Yeah, it goes down there. Um, the average age of our riders is 80 years old. Now that's currently, we've had it younger, but they've aged out to be that age. Um, we have 57 riders that are enrolled in our program that use our system monthly. Um, like Gary described, they call in, uh, we generally know who they are and when they're going to want to go. Um, so if we actually don't hear from them, we'll give them a call. And we'll, we'll see if they still want to be on the schedule. Our vehicles are made up of a multi-passenger bus with a chairlift on it. And it can carry 12 passengers. And then we have three vehicles, one of which is donated for our use by Gary Lang Auto Group. Now, whether that continues in the future or not would, remains to be seen since Lang sold the property to another uh, company. Um, the other two are, they're all either SUVs or uh, Sienna minivan. Those are the fleet that, that we operate. And we have two drivers regularly and a third on call if we need them. 
And like Gary mentioned, it's hard to find drivers. It really is. Um, so what, what I passed out to you is this is a brochure that is about our operation. Tells a little bit about our schedule. Uh, we have uh, uh, we list a dollar amount for each ride, but we don't insist on it. Well, the way we handle it is very discreetly. Everybody gets on, we give them a little coin envelope. They hand it back to us if it's got up there in it, that's fine. If, if there's no money in it, that's fine too. We, we're not worried about that. The main thing is to get people where they need to go. So where are the destinations? Hospitals, doctor appointments, uh, physical therapy. We do some things with um, just for entertainment purposes like um, the concert in the park series that, and, the, and the farmer's market in McHenry. That's a very popular place. We just did a uh, picnic outing up at the Richardson Farm, uh, the agribusiness center up there. Uh, kind of a camp out thing. Didn't stay overnight, but we had a campfire and uh, plenty of food. So it's social for our folks too. Um, we are a door-to-door -door service, and now if you switch over to this page here, it, it'll tell you, this is a typical monthly report that I give to our Board of Trustees. We had, in the month of September, we had 60 rides. Uh, that constituted 977 miles. We used 85 gallons of fuel. Uh, the fuel cost for the total was $310.62. We buy it from um, the Richmond Burton High School, so we get it at the distributor rate without having to pay state taxes. That's a considerable savings. Um, and you can see that over at the right there, our average mileage per gallon is 11.48. We pay, our, our total budget is uh, around $61,000 this year, of which we have got $20,000 in, in the form of a grant from the Senior Services Grant Commission. We've been participating with that program since its inception. Uh, when the voters approved the senior services back in 2003, I believe it was. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, that grant provided us with full funding to buy our, our first bus and to get us rolling and to get us up. Since then, the tightness of funds has caused that to cut back. Uh, we are also in the process of applying for another grant that we're hoping that will commit to $25,000 for each of two years. So we, we look for as many resources as we possibly can. One-fourth of our fleet operation is paid for by Gary Lang Auto. We, we, they give us the car, uh, they take care of all the maintenance on it, all we do is buy gas. And without that, this would definitely hurt our, our operation, for sure. So uh, you can see those gross salaries for the month were $3,535.50. Medicare and FICA deduct deductions. IMRF, IMRF is Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, for those of you who may not have heard, heard that. So our total salaries for the month were $3,574.20. There's a breakdown here that will take you um, down through the costs that we incur for cell phones, fuel, salaries, operating costs, etc. cetera. Um, and it, at the bottom it shows the cost, the riders contributed $252. We do have a person that works in my office from 7.30 till 2.30 every day that really operates the call center. And it is like mentioned by Gary, if somebody calls in that morning, we'll take them if we've got space for it. If, you know, we'll definitely do that. Um, to answer your question, you know, about 
uh, criticism. Why why our people ride our bus and why they don't ride MC Ride, for example? Um, we're door to door. That's number one. Uh, we take them and we stay with them and bring them home. There's they don't have to call a call center uh, again to get a ride back home. Uh, and my average age is 80 year old passengers. They may call from inside a doctor's office, but by the time they get their coat, their sunglasses, and out the door, the rides come and gone, and they'll stand there for an hour before they realize they need to call again. And they, they get upset about that. So uh, our drivers will help them not take things into their house, but we'll help them board the bus. Uh, put their packages, we, we run a shopping bus that goes along Elm Street one, one week and then up along 31 at the big box stores and then over to Spring Grove on the third week and it rotates like that. So our drivers will help them get uh, their packages situated and, and get off and, and they really like that. We've been doing it for years and uh, so I, I guess I, I've covered about everything here. Uh, anybody have questions? Well, I'm looking at your rates. So you go almost all over the county? Is that what I see? We, we will go on a 20 mile radius that takes us up to Burlington, Wisconsin, Lake Geneva, Crystal Lake. Um, yes, we'll we do that. We've talked about expanding that 25 mile radius because we've had uh, inquiries about doctor offices that are just slightly outside of our territory. I don't think it would hurt us at all if we expanded it to 25 miles. And you, you wait for the people when they're at their appointment? Yes. We stay there with them. Same thing on the shopping bus. Our bus is always in view. They may be going from the Jewel down to Angelo's or over to the Salvation Army store, but our passengers come out, they can see us, and we'll swing right back and pick them up. And our drivers all carry cell phones. They, the passengers know the number, so they can, if they have any questions, they can call the driver directly. So uh, is there, your fares are all round trip. Is every trip required to be a round trip then? So if you have a township resident that is for some reason in Crystal Lake, no, it's do they it call be. you and you go get them and bring them home? Okay. Yeah. I think I know the answer, Paul. But this service is only open, it's only available to township residents, right? So, so for Burton Township and Richmond Township, Richmond. we're a partnership. Oh, Richmond and Burton. Yeah. So Rick, uh, Burton goes all the way over to the uh, Lake County line. And, and both of us border on the Wisconsin. And you know, it's much more populous down here. Well, maybe not this location, but say to our south is McHenry, which has a dense population. And then cows outnumber people up in Richmond. So, you know, it's, it's the difference between night and day, and, and I know that makes it hard for a call center operation to route buses. That was another thing that uh, my passengers that, that did try uh, McRide is that if they went to Crystal Lake, it was an hour and a half trip, zigging and zagging, before they got home or going the other way, and, and that really tired them out. These are old people. Wait, I'm almost that old. You gotta <laughs> shut up. <laughs> okay then, I'll sit down. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I didn't see anybody from the village of Hebron. Is, is anybody here from Hebron today? I, I know we invited them to this meeting, and I spoke with the village president yesterday. He said he was going to try to send somebody here, but he wasn't sure whether they were going to make it. So. Uh, I, all I know about their program is that they have a senior bus that's just for senior citizens. And I think it's focused on getting people from Hebron up to Lake Geneva. 
uh, for shopping or whatever else that they need to do. Because actually, it's quicker to get up there than it is to come down to Woodstock. So um, we'll try to find more information about that. Just so you know, we're going to try to summarize everything we heard today into some kind of a report so that and distribute that to everybody here so you all have something to kind of look at and compare notes uh, in the future. So I just want to say thanks for being honest and open. Hopefully, we can continue this conversation at our February meeting in the next year. Thank you. Okay. Um, Kelly, we've got uh, the special import transit request. Yeah, we asked Kelly to come. Uh, she reached out to our staff about a month or two ago with some concerns that she's been having with her clients getting access to services. Um, she'll speak a little, bit, a little bit about that. She's got a couple proposals on how maybe we could we could fill that need. Um, just one. Just and one. I asked her, just one proposal, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, maybe this committee will come up with some more for you. Um, and, and really, you know, we wanted this conversation to start here before it gets to the county board level. And if there's money attached to it, uh, we think that should originate at this committee first. So Kelly, with that, uh, take it away and give us a Yes. Well, I am from the McHenry County Specialty Court. I've been the director since the end of April, and before that, I was the DUI court clinician. Um, so I worked for it for a while. So, does anybody know what the specialty courts are? Heard of them? Familiar with them? So, we are a program in the county that offers treatment instead of incarceration. So, if you choose to do our program, it's a voluntary program. All of our residents have to live in McHenry County, so we are only servicing. McHenry County residents um, and they do our program it's very strict we have random drug screens we have protocols that we follow um, closely standards um, that we have to follow um, our drug court is mandated by the Supreme Court so every county in Illinois has to have a drug court but it's not funded so we have to find the funding for it which is part of the problem um, I will also say our drug court is a mentor court. There are only 10 mentor courts in the United States. Um, so we really are rock stars in what we do. People come to us to learn how to do it better. Um, so one of the barriers that we have is transportation and it has been a problem for a really long time. Um, our clients, 51% of them do not drive, do not have access to a car or do not have a driver's license. So that creates a barrier in their treatment and we want to remove that barrier so they can focus on their recovery and treatment and getting better and getting well. And we not only serve our, service our clients, but when we treat them, we are treating their families. So we are trying to reduce that recidivism in families and with that specific person. Um, one of the benefits of the program is the average cost to incarcerate an inmate per year in prison is about $29,000. If they join a specialty court, um, that cost is 7200 So that saves people a lot of money. So that's one of the incentives for supporting our program is saving those taxpayer dollars. Um, like I said, we have drug court, mental health court, DUI court. All of those courts have a veterans track. So if you're a veteran, you get special services through our program, which is also awesome. Um, the recidivism rate for our programs right now, um, we base it off of three years. The recidivism rate for drug court is 6%, mental health court 15%, DUI court currently is 0% for repeat DUI offenses, 9% um, for other offenses. Um, in Illinois, the recidivism rate if they go to prison is 45%. So um, what we do really does have an impact on people and the community. Right now we have 118 active clients with 21 pending applications. There is a wait list for mental health court right now. Again, it's a voluntary program and you have to be a, a resident of McHenry County. So we have random drug screens um, that the clients have to adhere to. Um, so, and the minimum is two to three times a week. It could be more, but it'll never be less than two. Um, so that creates a problem for transportation. Uh, which is why the pace bus generally doesn't work for us because if they have to call, they don't they don't know until that morning if they have to come in. Um, the route buses, which I printed off, I don't know if you guys want to see that, they run early in the morning and then in the afternoon, so that leaves a big gap in their day. Sometimes if they do take the bus, they'll be at our office for hours waiting for the return trip, which really isn't conducive to, you know, because they can't do anything else. Um, I 
I have been searching for a, a solution to our problem of getting people to court, to probation, to their random drops, to meet with their clinician, um, and really just help them focus on their recovery. So I approached Independence Health, which is kind of kitty corner to where our building is. They have a fleet of buses, and I know we only use one of them. So I spoke to their director to see if they would partner with us, and they are willing to partner with us to run a route that would pick up at local train stations, Crystal Lake, Woodstock, and McHenry, which if you look, there's a graph of where most of our clients live, which is Woodstock, Crystal Lake, and McHenry. So let's say they live up in Harvard, they could take the train or a pace bus route to the train station. So really, uh, our locations would make it really accessible for them. And we do have funding from the Mental Health Board to supply uh, venture cards if they wanted to use the bus. Um, so that would alleviate that cost. Um, so if we partnered with them, it would be Monday through Friday. We'd have three routes. It would be about $200 per day or approximately $52,000 a year. So we're kind of seeking support to make this partnership happen. Um, or points of clarification that I can help you with? I'm interested in what your group timings are. Like, are you looking to fill kind of the spaces that are misled, like that are kind of empty when it comes to like our fixed route service? Um, we have a morning, a midday, and then a later afternoon. So, so like a midday is the area that I was thinking. Yeah, um, but we have court Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It starts at 2.30 ends at 4.30, so the afternoon we would essentially get them to court and then get them Um, we do have a platform called Kaizen through the Mental Health Board that we have been using to kind of supplement, um, but that is really expensive and they want us to find another means of transportation. So from December to, through August of this year, we spent $67,000 on rides for our program. Um, and the Mental Health Board cannot sustain that. So we're really in a predicament um, of helping these people get to where they need to be. And for those that don't know, Kaizen is more of like, uh, they use, it's kind of a third party that contracts with TNCs like Lyft and Uber and taxi cabs as well to kind of pick people up and drop them off on an as needed basis. It's more on demand, um, but it's very expensive because of that. It's a more personal service, but you can pay a lot more for that type of service. May I ask you a question? Are your uh, participants, they reside scattered all over the county? Correct. I can show you the graph if you'd like to see. That's primarily where they are currently. I, I have a question. Uh, did you, have you ever visited any of the other drug courts? Um, yes, I have. Wh which ones? Um, I went, well, I did um, DUI court, the one in Duluth, Minnesota. That's the one I've seen. Um, no, I asked because I was on the drug court team oh. to begin this. And it was fascinating. We, we went to Rockford, we went to, uh, I think it was Louisiana, and then we went out to San Diego. And each of the programs was totally different. Yeah, totally. And the one, the, the southern one was the most fun uh, <laughs> because the, uh, it was in a town, and you know how the south is, everybody knows everybody. And so the judge knew all of the people and would ask them questions, you know, about. Uh, I, yeah, I'm coming to see your mother for Thursday for dinner and that sort of thing. And what they did is they had all the people lined up and they gave them little prizes. And if they had been, uh, you know, free uh, drugs for a month, so let's say they got a little pin, and then some of them were getting t-shirts. And it was really interesting because that, that little bit of, of uh, goodness, you might say, really meant a lot to these people. They just couldn't believe that somebody was doing something for them. The uh, one of the most important ones that had the biggest group was San Diego, and they had five people on stage that told us their individual stories. And one woman, the problem that she had, I would, I think she was in her late thirties. The problem that she had is everybody in her family was an alcoholic, so she was going. She was released from the program. She's going to go home. And she's going to be, you know, but she knew that and she was going to get some support. But it was really interesting because in three, I think it was only three that I visited, they were all completely different. 
and uh, the situation with the nest fire, uh, I thought maybe that uh, going to some other ones might uh, give you some ideas. Or also, do you know how they find their transportation? Um, the ones I've been in contact with are like DuPage County and Lake County, so they are more populated, so it's more urban, although DuPage is in Wheaton, so it's a little out there, but their public transportation seems to be a little more fulfilling than ours is. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, the reason I ask is that it was, they were so different that I thought maybe if you were in contact with some place like San Diego, mm -hmm. they might have a might have a suggestion that we could use. And it just seemed to, they're not all the same. They, right. If they were, then you wouldn't, there wouldn't be any point to visit them. But I yeah. would really suggest that. But yeah, that would be an excellent thing to do, to go to those different ones and find out how they're handling this, because they're all doing it. That's right, for so sure. That's a great suggestion. So is this a question how PACE or Guile Rag can assist you? in providing the services, is that the request? No, my request is to support us working with Independence Health to okay. use their buses. Um, I, I reached out to see if PACE could help us, but I was, um, Scott had kind of suggested that yeah. we go this route. Okay. So what would what would assistance look like? Well, so when, I, when Kelly first came to me with this idea, I, I thought back to about 10 years ago when Sarah's predecessor um, came to us with a similar need, right? And the need at that time was we had seniors who they don't they can't buy pace because they need extra assistance. They, they need somebody to wait in the dialysis room for them to take them home after dialysis. And MC Ride isn't good at that type of trip, right? We're good at, at the public transportation side of things, driving people off, picking people up, doing a lot of that. But the more hand holding type stuff, that's not where we specialize. And similarly, these clients we're talking about, it, it's a tougher need, especially because it's you know, a lot of times it's the same day. Like you need, you need to give them a ride that day, and, and Gary will back me up. They like to have at least 24 hours notice, if not more, to schedule somebody in. They can sometimes do the same thing, but it's tough to do. So my mind immediately went to the fact of, okay, well. Even up till today, we're supporting Senior Care Volunteer Network, we at the DOT, with an annual, uh, call it a stipend, for their transportation program for their senior citizens. Um, could this committee, if you saw value in what is being proposed here, um, could this committee make a similar recommendation to have the, have the, have the county, the county board, uh, allocate some funding for this purpose? And, and $52,000 is kind of Kelly's asked at this time. Um, there's a lot of questions that I have about the sustainability of that long term, right? Um, I think the county board is, is going to question if, if, if the recommendation from this group were to be less fund this next year. Uh, the first question I'm going to get is, okay, we'll do it maybe for a year, but what happens after that? Is this going to be an annual thing forever, or is there going to be sort of an off ramp and maybe another source of funding in the future that can fund this? Um, but that's why I asked Kelly here today, was to kind of lay this out to get this committee's thoughts on whether you want to recommend that the county fund something like this ourselves through our funds. So I guess my question would be if the, the Kennedy County Mental Health Board is covering the cost of Kaizen, is, how is that much different than the county transportation department covering the cost of this? Different pots, right, or different buckets, I right. guess. You know, Mental Health Board, they do have limited funding for transportation. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they say that to everybody that asks, I mean, they've got a lot of demand for transportation on their ends, all the different uh, nonprofits that are going after that funding. Um, DOT, you know, we, we fund two transit programs. We fund our own, and we fund Senior Care Volunteer Network. And we have resources at our disposal that maybe the Mental Health Board doesn't have financial yeah. speaking. Okay. Uh, I did request funds from Mental Health Board, but was denied. So I'm just did, did talking they, to anybody that'll listen. Yeah. The the money you're getting to Kaizen, they're paying for that now, but they're saying it's Yeah, it's too we're much. overusing it, yeah. so we really need to make other arrangements. Which it's been a problem for a long time. Um, and now I'm the director, so now it's my problem. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I'm sorry, what's this one? Yeah, I mean, I think this definitely fills in, fills in the mission of the county 
and of the dial ride system. I mean, I think it's definitely definitely worthwhile to consider it. I mean, I would definitely support a request to the county for, for funding. And it is county-wide. Uh, it seems to be a great program. It's through the county court. So, um, you know, I know there's some independence there, but I think it definitely is worthwhile. I would be supportive of making a request to the county. I would be supportive as well. I think it's a very worthwhile program worthwhile program. I think it fits some transportation needs. It's just a different population and I think it's very beneficial. So it kind of solves that on demand kind of problem, right? Because right. then you go daily around to the, the train stations. Right. And then bringing them all right to the right. courthouse. Yeah. So they call in the morning, they know if they have to come to a random drug screen. Um, but sometimes they do have scheduled appointments with their clinician or with probation or have court, so that would just alleviate a ton of transportation problems for us. How many people are in the special courts now? Right now it's 118 and there's 21 waiting to get in. Okay, has anybody ever done an analysis of what it would cost to incarcerate those people versus the program? Yes, it's on the sheet. It's, um, for prison for one year in Illinois, it's almost $29,000. To do the specialty court program, it's $7,200 per year. So that's oh, $21,000 for the Right. Yeah. So wouldn't that be a reason that, that you could get from the county? Um, it kind of comes from different like court fines and fees covers it. Um, some might come from taxes. I'd have to get the breakdown. Okay. I don't know I'm exactly. Curious. But it's several different pots that pay that. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's saving uh, it's saving the county money. Right. right. The, A significant the court amount. system is yeah. saving them. And it, it seems like that's, that uh, argument hasn't been made to the powers that be as yeah. far as funding. Yeah. Well, if, you, if you didn't have that and you had to put these people in jail, why aren't you willing to give us some money to keep right. out of jail? Right, agreed. So, and if anybody wants to come watch drug court or mental health court or DUI court, it's a public forum, so you're more than welcome, just let me know. Um, I'd love to have you. And also, our graduations are awesome. Mm -hmm. So if you ever want to come to one, it is life-changing for sure. Great, thank you. I just had one quick question. Um, the uh, Independence Health, are they uh, in this proposal, are they going to be covering drivers? Yes, they, they are hiring the drivers, so that $200 a day fee covers the salary and benefits for the drivers and all costs. Like that is flat, total, no additional charges should be incurred. I know in years past, insurance issues, liability insurance has come up with, especially even with Independence Health, I think there's been agencies in the past that have eyed their fleet that's being underutilized throughout the day and have said, well, we can't be tapped into that. And I think we get so far down the line and then something happens where people get cold feet because of the liability. Mm -hmm. They're called insurance companies. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did that come up? In yes, the we have checked. Um, it should not be an issue. And we even checked to see if they could hire drug court graduates, and they are able to. So if we could go full circle, that would be incredible. And, and it, it wouldn't be mixing clients, correct? It, on the on the buses, that wouldn't be independent help. Right. No, this would just be specialty yeah. court clients. Mm -hmm. Is is there um, a way if the county wasn't amenable to funding the full project cost? Is there a way to gradually implement it or do a trial or just kind of? At this point, I'd be willing to try anything. So <laughs> they, if they weren't willing to fully fund it, maybe we could do it two days a week to start to see how beneficial it is yeah. and see if it goes from there. So maybe that's something if there's a concern about funding, maybe we try start a trial. I thought the same thing, Eric. You know that. I think even we did that with senior care volunteer network. We sort of tiptoed into it. We demonstrated that it was a successful program, and they were able to increase the funding over time. Uh, so yeah, I, I just want to say thanks, Kelly, for coming yeah, out. Yeah, thanks for having me. It sounds like there's support at the committee to at least bring this forward through the process. Thank you very much. Um, and I think that our next meeting in February, we'll sort of yeah, Tom. I would appreciate actually a motion, a formal recommendation from this committee, if you guys wouldn't mind. I would like to just note that in the minutes. Okay. Sure. I'll make a motion. 
to support the program and to make a rec recommendation for county funding. Second. And uh, I'll, do roll call. I'll, I'll vote yes. Here. Yes. Virginia? Yes. 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 Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, you all have my business card with my email, phone number. Call me with questions, concerns. If you want to come one visit. Is, is there a, is there a case? Could, I mean, could this be a McBride subscription? It, yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, anytime you, like you're talking about a segregated client base yeah. and providing a pay service, I, I know pay gets a little hesitant to even commit to something like that. Yeah. Um, and, and you know it sets a precedent too that we're going to tell Gary to, to, to kind of do this separate thing for these clients. And I don't want to necessarily go down that road. That's why I, I like the idea of creating something independent from our <coughs> program and treating it differently, funding it differently, not, not kind of, you know, kind of like we do with senior good you know, It's not wrapped into the MC Rock program. It's this separate thing altogether. And I will say that, you know, as a public agency, we also have other programs that we, you know, called our community vehicle program, municipal vehicle program, oh, yeah. local-based services, where we give a vehicle to a nonprofit, to an entity of government, for a low monthly cost if they take on the, you know, the operation of whatever service they would like to do. Um, we have some senior circulators, we have some community circulators throughout the region, um, and it's a low monthly cost to an agency or to a nonprofit. So we do have other services, but with that it comes, they have to build the program, they have to hire the drivers, they have to take on the insurance, so there are other steps that go into it, but there are opportunities in that area. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, the FY 23 through 25 MCDOT transportation program. Yeah, this will be really yeah. quick. I just want to give a brief update for everybody here. Um, our, our five-year transportation program is going through the approval process at the county board level right now. Um, what that is is it lays out all the projects, roads, bridges, transit that we're going to be, you know, taking on over the next five years. Uh, if you if you'd like to go on and, and read through the program, you're, you're you're able to do so. You go to the county's homepage, you navigate to transportation, and it's right at the top here, draft program. And it's 129 pages of, of good stuff to read. Um, you know, of note, we have our MC Ride program outlined in here. We have Senior Care Volunteer Networks Partnership outlined in here. And we also, relevant to this committee, we have some funding set aside for the future Metro Rail Yard relocation project to just outside Woodstock. Um, that, that's a project we're partnering with Metro on to kind of move the rail yard out, expand it to increase service along the UP Northwest line. So, um, those are the three kind of transit-related projects that we're finding here. Most of this is going to be roads and bridges, though, uh, stuff that we typically do on a day-to-day -day basis here at this agency. So I just wanted to point that out. And I will mention how projects get into this document is they first originate in our long-range transportation plan. So we're currently updating our LRTP. It's called McHenry County Moves 2050. We've got a website, uh, McHenry County Moves 2050.com. We're still taking public input, so if you have projects you want us to consider adding to the to the to the plan, feel free to let us know. There's a lot of uh, ways that you can give input here. You can check out some previous plans we've done too. So uh, don't forget about this. We're hoping that the new county board being seated next month, um, we're going to try to get out to speed on the work we've done yet to date, and then get this thing adopted sometime in the summer of 2023. Is what is where our timeline looks like. So that, that's all I have here. If there's any questions, you can follow up with me after. Thank you. And then uh, 5D, the 2023 PTAC meeting dates. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Jazz? Should we take a motion on this? If you'd like. Those are just. Um, is it just well, if it's just. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, it, it just keeps the same format Thursdays, um, the first Thursday of the month at 2 p.m. But if there's any proposals to change that, um, we could open that up to discussion. Works for me. We're always looking for people to host our meeting too. So I'm looking at the cities in particular. If you guys would mind hosting one of these, uh, we, we love getting out in the community, not having people come to us. So we're always willing to host here, but we'd like to be elsewhere. Yeah, we'd be happy to host. Or, yeah, yeah. Sure. And Tom, I got one more thing after that. Actually. Um, okay. I, the next item is Scott's. One more thing. I, I did want to mention that 
right now our bylaws, there's seven members of this committee. Uh, one of the members is technically the Council of Mayors representative, uh, the planning liaison for the Council of Mayors. Well, Jasmine used to be in that role. She's since been promoted uh, about uh, three, four months ago. She promoted her to this position, being the transit uh, coordinator for the county. And we have yet to hire a new planning liaison. And, and we don't know when that position is going to get filled. Uh, so what I've done is I've reached out to Shailen Daigle, who's part of the Council of Governments. She's the executive director of the Council of Governments. It's a similar agency. Um, they just do more legislative, more advocacy type work. Um, more than the Council of Mayors, which is primarily a transportation-focused position. Um, so I thought for this group's consideration is swapping the Council of Mayors representative with the Council of Governments representative to have Shailen represent uh, her group on this PTAC committee. And if, if there is support for that, we can bring forward a change to the bylaws at our February meeting um, if you'd like us to do that. Yep, I'm supportive. Yeah, I'm supportive that we do, could it be both? I mean, either or. Just in case this happens again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed that to that. We can work out the details, Jalen and I. Um, yeah, because yeah. we again, we don't know when we're going to hire somebody. It's tough to find uh, in this market to find planners. So, um, let's see. Promise to stay on forever. I'm not planning on going anywhere, <laughs> but I can be flexible. That's yeah. no problem. I can work with Scott. Yeah, Jalen's been great to, to at least commit for you know until her term would expire, um, potentially longer, but. Uh, Again, we'll bring that forward next at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got. What do you want to motion for that? Yeah, actually, that would help. Yeah. Uh, so I propose the bylaws be changed and add a cog. Cog. Yeah. Or that vote. I'll second. Uh, I'll vote yes. Yes. Virginia? Did you get a motion and a second? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Mumble through. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. I just, I have a, a thing. I, I'm sorry that nobody was here from Metro because I actually have poodles from Metro. Uh, the seven dollar ride on the weekend is fantastic yeah and the idea is was I assume to get people into Chicago for entertainment and something I go to Chicago on Friday nights and uh, I get the I used to get the 415 they changed the time without telling me <laughs> fortunately it was uh, later it was 445 but um, I, I many many years ago was at a fundraiser and Jeff Ladd, who was on the Metro board at the time, was there with his wife. And I said, you know, Jeff, people are going in on Friday night as well as going in on Saturday for entertainment because that's what I was doing. I was going to the opera. And I said, you know, you really could consider maybe that last check, 415, uh, would be, uh, you know, reduced, right? And uh, his wife thought it was a fabulous idea. I think Jeff didn't think it was a fabulous idea. But every year when I go to the Metro, I say, why don't you consider set just so at the end of Friday night the inbound be be the lower uh, price? So I would still recommend that. But I I can't say enough for going in on a Sunday to a football game or whatever that seven dollars is fantastic and it's seven dollars both ways, which is actually cheaper than using a senior uh, card. So and is it available on Fridays now? The seven dollar one? Or did you say it? Not no, there isn't. No, no, yeah. you pay a regular week's Friday. Yeah. I would like to have. Something yeah. at, the, at the 445 or whatever. I don't know which other. They switch um, it. If you catch yeah, the last train coming home on Friday, you can get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. uh, but the idea, I think, originally for the weekend, the Saturday and Sunday, was to get people into Chicago to the entertainment. And you'd feel, gee, I can, seven bucks, what, uh, that's great. And that's a, that's a round trip. So, I mean, uh, so that my daughter and I do use the $7 now. But I just thought for them. Uh, just selfishly, on Friday night, I'd love to have a, a seven dollar fare as well, instead of paying in and out on my uh, senior rate. So, anyhow, so I was going to congratulate Metra on, on helping me out, but uh, they're not here. So, next time. But it'll be in the record. Okay. On that note, if anybody wants to go, Met Metra has their budget hearing in a half hour at Crystal Lake City Hall. Um, so you're welcome to leave this meeting and go to the Metro Budget hearings if you'd like to do that. Oh, and join me because I'll be probably going to the pretty short. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we should.
The motion adjourned so you can get to your next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. See you at all. Okay, thanks.